Hey everyone, um, I wanted to make first of all an apology because I had showed you guys uh, a video on this uh, this app, and apparently it got taken out off the Play Store. Um, the sir, the uh, the company still has a website account, so everything's still there. Like all my money's there, but I guess you can no longer get the app. So again, I apologize. Um, I probably downloaded it around a month ago before I started making these trades because I was waiting for some good dip buys. And I guess from that time that I downloaded it, that must that must have been when they had removed it. So again, I apologize. Was that was not my intent to to deceive you guys like that. I'm very sorry. Um, but like I said, though, you could still get the benefit of of what this uh, service is with the fractional share buying. Um, from the website service if you want a loyal three website so if it's something you're interested in um you know by all means don't let the fact that just because you can't get it as an app stop you you can still probably go to the website through the phone or just at home and do it that way but um in this video i wanted to kind of talk about a question i got um and it's more of a uh i guess like a Age, ageism or ageist question you know like what what should you invest in at certain ages um in your life you know like 20s to 30s 30s to 40s 40s to 50s and all that um so i'm i'm just just for sake of argument like i'll i'll kind of entertain the idea but just understand you know like i don't like saying specifically buy this stock specifically buy that stock you know what i mean like i don't like doing that um, I'll try to steer you all in a direction, like maybe a certain sector or a certain area, a certain interest of yours, but I don't like tying people down to certain stocks because, you know, you guys are limitless in your options. You know, it's not, it's not even that like as a young person, you should buy growth stocks versus an old person buying uh, value stocks. You know, you could buy either or and do what you want. It's, at the end of the day, it's your money. You do whatever the hell you want with it. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just trying to give you some advice. But anyway, that that aside, I wanted to kind of do one for uh, people in their 20s, you know, younger investors. Um, because one, the sooner you start, the better. It doesn't mean if you started later, it's bad or anything. It's just the the sooner you start, the longer your compound interest can add up. You know, you can turn 2,000 into 4,000, 4,000, 8,000, 8,000, 16, 16, 32, so on and so forth. You know, it just keeps adding up year after year after year. So ultimately, the sooner you start, the better, but the older you get, the, the wiser you get, the more experienced you get, you know, the better trades you can ultimately make. Now, even though I didn't start at 18, 19, or 20 right out of the gate, you know, I started uh, like mid-20s uh, into my 30s, you know, that's kind of like my span right there where I started and where I'm at right now, I, uh, I don't have a specific... Uh, a set of stocks that I that I always bought into you know I bought whatever I wanted but I've noticed over time of doing it that since I was starting in the 20 range where some people might be I, w I wasn't um, too much worried about losing money in the sense that you know when you're 65 years old and you just hit retirement and you're losing money in your account you know you freak out because you know that's your life savings right there that's everything you've worked for when you're 20 25 you know you still you still get hurt that you lose money but you know it's not it's not the end of the world because you know you're going to keep working you're going to make that back but um some ideas for all of you in your 20s or even if you're older it really doesn't matter you know it's just these like i said these are just ideas at the end of the day you choose what you want to do but in your 20s ideally you want to go for growth stocks and me being a california resident you know i got a lot of tech stocks around me and those are like great growth stocks so Amazon, for instance, is a good stock. I mean, I don't even got to tell you what Amazon is. Everybody that watching this video should know what Amazon is. But, um, you know, it's a great company. It's disrupting uh, major market real retailers. Um, it's taking business from Walmart. You know, it's, it's taking business from, like, book companies and, and bookstores, shutting them down. You know, it's, it's a business where you have an entire mall at your fingertips, essentially. You know, like, you don't even have to step outside your house to see 10,000 different items you know that you could potentially buy and what the ratings are and what the deals are and you can have a wish list and you know you can watch as the percentage drops you can ultimately buy like me in specific there's this like I I, I, I don't say I collect watches but I definitely have an affinity and uh, uh, an affinity for watches so I have a few and there's one 
model that I actually found on Amazon that I want that I'm just sitting it. It's just sitting in my watch list right now. I'm just waiting for it to go down, down, down in price to ultimately buy it, which is, you know, an added benefit of Amazon. You know, I can do all that. But, you know, this 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 stock has sharp moves in the market. You know, it could it could move a few dollars in a day easily. It could jump, you know, 10 percent easily. So with that high growth, you know, there's also high risk for every. 5% that it could shoot up, you know, it could shoot down 5%. For every 20% it could shoot up, it could shoot down 20%, you know? So that's definitely a riskier way to go. Um, you could you could also go with Apple. Now, me personally, I don't really like Apple. I think too much of their business is in cell phones, and they need to diversify that a little better. But, again, that's just me. If you love Apple, awesome. Buy Apple. If you If you understand Apple, you know, you know the numbers, you know, you know the company, what it does. I mean, go for it. But I'm just saying... This as if you're a young investor and you're interested in it, it it's another a good company it also does a dividend and they do a lot of sh uh, share buybacks so they're always trying to keep their their stock price pushed up which is ultimately good for your wallet um and you could go into uh like american express um probably if you're in your 20s i mean you might be into video games um, Activision Blizzard, popular company, you know, that's that's another good growth stock. As long as the video games continue to be popular, which I don't see them ever not being popular and, and with that with the adage of three D being more and more I mean not three D, um well actually three D but all as well as uh, virtual reality. You know, more more ways, you know, high high def gaming, you know, more more um intuitive gaming, you know, more interactive gaming, you know, it's it's only gonna continue to get better and better. So I mean, this could also be a good potential play. It could, it could hedge you against um, some, uh, the first couple of stocks, the tech stocks that I gave you, as a way of uh, going in a different avenue, a different direction. Now it could also get pulled down with those stocks at the same time if the market as a whole is going down. But it's good to always pick a few different stocks in a few different sectors. That way they could uh, trade it uh, in, or differently, and you don't have to like watch your stocks go all up at once or go all down at once. Now, Dave and Buster's, Coca-Cola, Disney, all these, you could also buy into these, but they're not uh, really aggressive growth stocks. Um, Facebook's a good stock. Um, I do like Facebook, and I'm, I'm going to be buying it in the near future when it comes down in price, just to give you guys that heads up. Um, but right now, it's sitting at an all-time high. You know, I don't, I don't like buying stocks at an all-time high. I like buying it when it's a little cheaper, and I can buy more shares at a time. But, uh, you know, Facebook, they got close to 2 billion users. I think like a 1.2 billion daily active users or something like that. Um, they made some good acquisitions in the past I talked about, like uh, WhatsApp and Instagram. And uh, there's another one I'm blanking on right now. But, um, you know, Mark Zuckerberg's definitely made some good moves in the past, and it's shown. Uh, his VR Oculus uh, purchase doesn't seem to be doing as well as anticipated. But, I mean, like I said, he's he's made good moves in the past. So, I mean, maybe this is something that over time it's going to, uh, it's going to populate, but just understand that Facebook monetizes its web pages. So if you ever get pissed off that you go on your Facebook or your Instagram, or whatever, and you see ads, be happy that if you're invested in that company, that means someone somewhere is watching those ads and they could potentially buy what's on it. And Facebook is going to continue to get revenue for that. So they're very good at monetizing their business that way. So 1.8 billion users, that's 1.8 billion, you know, potential buyers of something that they're going to be benefiting from. Um, first data is kind of interesting. Um, some of these other ones, not as much. Um, Intel, not really much of a growth stock, but a good tech stock that's been around a long time. Uh, Microsoft, same thing. Macy's and Mattel, not so much. Netflix, that's, that's a pretty good growth stock. Um, <clears throat> I did buy it in the past and I made money off of it, but I'm concerned with this stock because, you know, it has other players. You know, it's got Hulu with their service it's got amazon with their service you know there's a uh, i think apple's doing some stuff too i know they got the the apple tv you know roku and all that so it definitely has competitors um netflix obviously being the most well known uh for their business but i mean it's a good growth stock too it, it makes big moves i think in one year it went from like twenty dollars to like a hundred and twenty dollars so like just in like in one year alone you know so this is this is a company that's definitely proven it's, it it can grow um but understand though there is competition with this uh company now a company like amazon you know not so much because they're the biggest name in the business um you could argue that alibaba is a competitor but alibaba is like basically 
China's version of Amazon. So that's where their lar their largest market is. It's not as big as, as it is in America. So if you want to hedge against your Amazon bet and go against and go with Alibaba and kind of bet on the Chinese consumer in that space, which I mean they have over a billion people, so that's a lot of people potentially buying um, from that website. I mean it, it'd be a good idea, but um, I don't know if in your twenties you necessarily want to be going out. I don't want to say go outside of your country to make these uh, trades. Uh, I just think it's easier for you, especially when you're starting out, to invest in companies that are kind of homegrown and you can get more information on. But, I mean, if you're the venturous person and you want to get a good hedged portfolio and you want to get diversified, I mean, by all means, go for it. Um, Square Stock's another interesting one. Now, I personally uh, pr would prefer PayPal over Square Stock. Uh, but, but Square, the business itself, is really good because it's great for entrepreneurs and small businesses by simply plugging in your, you know, that little adapter device to your phone. You can swipe credit card payments all day. So if you're running a little you know, hot dog cart... A little shop you know you're selling paintings on the corner you know whatever you know you could accept payments of all kinds from people you know so this is a great way for pe uh, people with small businesses to kind of up and come but um i prefer paypal more because they did they've been around a lot longer they were a big part of ebay collecting all their payments so i i stick to the more safer bet typically because i'm a little older i'm not in my 20s anymore but i mean i still see paypal and uh, Square as kind of more the future of payments and how things are going to get done. Because already you got most of your payments you could do through your phone. I mean, fucking the other day I went to Starbucks and I don't go to Starbucks often, but like half the people in line just like flashed their phone in front of a little scanner and it, they paid for their coffee, you know. So you can do so much with the, with your phone and, and even buy stuff, you know. So it's it's an incredible way to think about like a future investment of how, how the payment system is going to progress. So that's 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 another good opportunity there. Um, Tesla, man, this is a it's a good growth stock, but it's 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 heartbreaking to watch sometimes. You know, uh, Elon Musk. I think he's an interesting guy. I'm more interested in his SpaceX program, but um, but I believe it's a private company, so I don't think you can invest in that. I could be wrong though. But uh, Tesla has a lot of ups and downs. I mean, what, what he's trying to do with his car company is kind of re redesign the way people think about electric cars. I mean, if you look at Priuses and Volts and uh, uh, all, little Hondas or all the little, in my opinion, not very aesthetically pleasing um, electric cars. And then you see a Tesla and, you know, everybody's head turns, you know, because like it's a beautiful looking car. They obviously stole from the Porsche uh, line up on how they design their cars but i mean it's 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 eye appealing or it's eye catching you know it's a fast car it's well made it's got it's got good uh it's got good uh, electronics in it um made in america for the most part i believe i mean so there's there's all like kind of benefits you could say for this company but it's highly leveraged and it's because it it's it's a hard business to be the main guy making electric cars when everyone else is making gas guzzling cars you know what i mean so just to keep that in mind like in the future obviously we're going to go towards electric cars what, what, whatever you believe about oil and coal and all that all that stuff's going to go away eventually if you look at like california like pushing out probably the most uh hybrid or economy friendly cars whatever you want to call it and California is like the sixth, the sixth largest economy in the world. You know, it's it's going to continue to keep pushing out these cars. Other other uh, states and countries are going to follow suit. You know, more and more countries are going to want to go to a more hybrid option. If you look at, uh, I forget what year it was, but when uh, Obama and uh, several other countries, I think over a hundred total, signed that um that uh that global deal to to work towards a uh, a cleaner earth basically you know um less carbon emissions um having more hybrid cars having more invested in solar and such like that you know that's that's not just the direction that america wants to go that's the direction that the planet wants to go and everybody on it they like as uh, like all the countries you know sign that uh deal and they want to push towards a more uh eco-friendly kind of environment so i mean this could be a play for you um i personally it's just too much. It's just too much to watch this stock because it, it's just so up and down, up and down. And I don't, I don't see, foresee myself buying it. But I mean, I think I think Elon Musk is is a good dude, honestly. And I think it's hard what he's trying to do. But I mean, he's a very motivated guy, and I've seen him talk and heard or I heard of some of his speeches, you know. And I could tell he's he's about it. But uh, depending on how you feel is 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 what you guys are ultimately going to invest in. 
Um, Twitter, I don't, I don't even want to mention Twitter. I don't really like Jack Dorsey, the CEO, but he is the CEO of, of Square, I guess. So, I mean, I can't really hate on it too much. But um, this company is so good for giving people instant news, you know, because it's not like you have to be friends with someone on Facebook. You could just simply follow somebody or a network or whatever. And whenever they post something, you got that information instant before it even goes to a news channel, you know. So it's a great source for getting information like that. Uh, the company itself, though, isn't ran as well, though, and they're not they're not showing that they can consistently grow profits. Um, they're not as good as monetizing as Facebook. So, I mean, if you believe in this stock, that it can improve, it is a good growth stock, but just what I've seen for the past year or so, I mean, it's not, it's not interesting to me enough to want to buy it. Um, and really, really, that's kind of it that I see on this list. And like I said, I, I didn't... The reason, the reason I just chose this app because all these, uh, all these stocks are just kind of right here, and these are some good big names that you guys could check out. But uh, ultimately, um, when you guys look for stocks and you're in your twenties, you know, understand, you know, you got nothing but time on your side. You know, you got a long road ahead of you, so you can afford to make mistakes. Now, I'm not saying purposely do that, but you can take a lot more risks than someone in their forties and fifties. You know, you could you could absorb that pain because, you know, you're going to be going to work, you know, Monday through Friday or every day or whatever your schedule is because, you know, you're young. You know, this, 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 that's kind of just the thing. You know, once you get out of high school, go to college, come out, go to work, you know. And once you go to work, you work for however long until you retire. So why not on the side, you know, start investing but try to take more risks. That way you can ultimately have a much better retirement, you know. Don't don't be so conservative when you're starting out and you're when you're young, but at the same time, have conservative investments in your portfolio to hedge against your risk. Um, ultimately, diversifying um, with other stocks, even even stocks that trade um, on other on other um, markets as well as in other countries. You know, think about all those aspects um, that you could ultimately learn about and adapt to your portfolio, but ultimately like you're going to be looking towards like high growth stocks um being in your 20s you know because you want that money to grow fast so like i said I, I i don't typically like to tell you guys to buy certain stocks but like i'm just using this app as an example you know obviously you can look into it more but i mean from this video you know i i, I mentioned like tech stocks you know there's also like uh pharmaceutical stocks um you know, Tesla's like a tech company, but like also a car company. So it's kind of more of a hybrid. You know, there's there's various stocks. I mean, you could you could literally just Google like best growth stocks for a twenty something or millennial or whatever the hell you want to call it. You know, and it'll give you a bunch of great options. And you guys can always watch other videos and you know get good ideas too. This is just a little bit of something extra that you guys can, you know, watch and digest and determine on determine if you want to use this strategy or not. And it's totally up to you. But uh, with that. Um, that's, I think that's all I'm going to do for this one. I, I, I just, there's just, there's not too much I want to, uh, I want to say on it because it's, it's more, I think it's more fun, especially in your twenties to kind of figure this stuff out because it comes more interesting and you not only do it as like a hobby on the side, but that can ultimately be your long time goal of, you know, becoming a millionaire or become, becoming a day trader or, you know, investing for other purposes, you know, you you can afford to take those risks so like go out there and explore you know try things out don't be afraid but at the same time you know be smart like if you use robin hood you know you're not going to pay fees so even if you lose money on a trade at least they don't take fees from you or if you use like the stash app you know you're only paying like a dollar a month plus a, a very minimal etf fee at the end of the year you know if you're able to if you go online and use the loyal three uh website you know you could buy and buy and sell these stocks for no fee but they don't buy and sell the same moment that you set that order. You know, they do batch orders. So whenever a bunch of people buy one of these these stocks, that's when it, it buys or when it sells it, that's when they sell it. You know, utilize the fact that, you know, you have that phone in your hand fucking every day. You know you're staring at it. You know, you're probably doing it right now. You might as well use it to make you some money, you know. So, so don't be afraid to, like, take those risks. I mean, you can start with Acorns even and just, you know, have a very basic, plain um uh platform to work with and you can start making money you know just to get you interested and you're in your 20s it's all about experimentation you know you're, you're just starting out 
Um, but you guys have more knowledge and you know what to do with Believe Me. When I was, when I was 18, 19, 20, like, the internet wasn't <laughs> like it is today. <laughs> Not even close. It's, it's, it, it constantly evolves and expands every year and it just continues to grow. And there's just so much more information you guys could get. So take, a much, take, take in as much as you can. And you know, like I always say, watch as much of this content as you can. And I hope it helps you guys. Um, if you have any more questions, you know, uh, leave, leave a comment. I'll try to answer it. And maybe if, if this video does good, I'll try to make different categories for different ages, you know, or something like that. Maybe, maybe that's what you guys would want to see more of to help you out. Um, and with that, as always, you know, uh, help me out. Click like and subscribe on my channel and I can keep this thing going for you all. And I hope this video was helpful. So good luck with that.